Welcome to The Politocrat. I am Omar Moore. It is Saturday, August the 15th, 2020. Good evening from Washington, D.C. I'm Zerlina Maxwell in for Chris Hayes. The U.S. Postal Service says if you vote by mail, there is a good chance that your vote will not be counted. The Washington Post reports the Postal Service warned 46 states and the District of Columbia that they cannot guarantee all mail-in ballots will arrive in time to be counted. 40 of those states, including battleground states like Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Florida, were told, quote, their long-standing deadlines for requesting and returning or counting ballots were incongruous with mail service, and that voters who send ballots in close to those deadlines may become disenfranchised. I want to get to CNN's chief legal correspondent now, Jeffrey Tubin. Jeffrey, what the hell is going on? How are you, by the way? Um, I'm good. I'm good. Um, th- it's th- This is scary, Don. I got to say, I mean, you know, it's been Republican Party policy for decades to try to stop Democrats from voting. You know, whether it's, uh, you know, closing polling places in the South, whether it's, you know, photo ID requirements, limiting early voting, limiting absentee voting. This is has been national policy, but it's usually kind of dressed up um, as something other than it is. Well, there's not even any pretense about what the president is doing now. He is saying he wants to starve the Postal Service because he wants Democrats not to vote. He said that he didn't. This isn't an interpretation. This is what he said. And, and the chilling thing about it is, you know, given the structure of the federal government, there's really not a lot that the Democrats or anyone can do about it. He's the president. They run the administration. There are only 80 some or so days till the election. They're not subpoenas that can be issued from the House. You can't force the Postal Service to do its job. Wait, stop, stop, stop. No, there is something that can be done about this garbage. There is something that can be done about this. I do beg to differ with CNN legal analyst Jeffrey Tubin in one respect, is that we the people can do something about this. Before you heard that clip with Don Lemon and Jeff Tubin from last night on CNN Tonight with Don Lemon on Friday's episode, you heard the clip from All In with Chris Hayes with Zelina Maxwell on Friday evening as she talked about the post office and about the warnings that have been sent to 46 of the 50 states that their deadlines may not be met as a consequence of the USPS slowdown by the Postmaster General, Louis DeJoy, who is destroying the democratic process as I speak. It is important to know about these stories. And by the way, there has now been an an end, according to the United States Postal Service, of taking blue mailboxes off the streets in this country. It had been happening in Montana, it had been happening in Oregon, it had been happening in a lot of the Western states, but it's also been happening in New York. It's been happening in a number of other states across the country. And thanks to the pressure and outcry from you and from politicians, particularly like the senator from Montana, John Tester, the Democrat, and other politicians. The USPS announced yesterday evening that it is going to stop taking blue mailboxes off the streets. There have been photos of stacks and stacks of them being stacked up on trucks. And my thing is, and my question is, are they going to put those mailboxes back where they stole them from? Or back where they took them from? That's what should be happening now. I would call the United States Postal Service and speak to someone about this. Tell them to put those mailboxes back 
where they were taken from. The target focus of this episode of The Politocrat is to inform you, the voter, with accurate information, the facts, the sources for those facts, and they're all going to be from the official websites of the secretaries of state throughout this country. That's what I've been doing from the start. That's what I will continue to do. And that's what I'll be doing in the future. I will talk about the importance of voting early. Given the things that you've just heard on those two audio clips, the focus of this episode, the importance of voting early. You must vote early. And some other comments about voting. Plus, two more states. South Dakota and Tennessee. Next. wants to starve the Postal Service because he wants Democrats not to vote. He said that. He didn't, he, this isn't an interpretation. This is what he said. And, and the chilling thing about it is, you know, given the structure of the federal government, there's really not a lot that the Democrats or anyone can do about it. He's the president. They run the administration. They're only 80 some or so days till the election. They're not subpoenas that can be issued from the House. You can't force the Postal Service to do its job. Only the people running the Postal Service can force them to do its job. And the people running the Postal Service seem determined to try to limit participation in this election. Wow. Wow. And how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, how was the play? You know how that goes. Right. right? So... Look, there is something we can do about this. And that, again, that's Jeff Tubin <laughs> on Don Lemon. I and mean, look, I, I, in a very real sense, I hear what Jeff Tubin's saying. And what he's saying is correct in terms of the structure. This is a classic example, everybody, of the system working. That's right. I didn't misspeak. This is a classic example of the system working. The system of voter suppression has been working for centuries, for, well, for considerable amounts of decades. And as you heard there from Jeff Tubin in the earlier clip, not the one I just played, but the earlier clip to begin this podcast. Republicans have engaged in voter suppression for a long time, a long time. And so this is a system that they're using. And what they're doing is bending the system a little bit. But the system doesn't have to be bent that much because there's no safeguards. The House can pass every election protection bill it wants to. But if the Senate doesn't take those up, Mitch McConnell, Moscow Mitch, then things will go on as they are. The Democrats can scream and shout, and, and rightly so, and sound the alarm, and, and they should, rightly so, everybody should be, not just Democrats. And by the way, Republicans should be shouting the alarm and sounding it too. But the Democrats can sh shout and sound the alarm all they want. But if there is no constitutional amendment officially guaranteeing the right to vote to say in the Constitution, we declare that there is a right to vote in this country and no state can disrupt that right in any way, shape or form based on any of the protected classes, based on anything. Until you have that amendment, you're going to continue to have the problems that you're having.
until we have a national voting system where everybody is aware of, okay, this is what you do and this applies in every state. And until we have a national popular vote, which there is a way, I think it's called nationalpopularvote.com or .org. You can find that website and sign your name to a petition that says that you do not want any more electoral college. You want a national popular vote to determine these elections. Until you have a national popular vote, you are going to forever have these problems. These are the areas for an action agenda. Not just for the election coming up now in just 80 days. Eight zero days. 80. Until this election on November 3rd. I mean, this is going to come really quickly. And I'm going to play a few more clips, even though I sit here and say, yes, I think um, not necessarily that the media is doing fear mongering, but they are raising the alarm. But I'm also going to, in addition to playing some of those clips that you've already heard, I'm going to be giving you, the listener here, some very important information that is going to be of, I think, great help. But not only that. I'm going to be asking and begging you. And I don't beg people. I'm going to beg you to vote early. I have been talking on this podcast for a good few months now about a voting plan. Having a voting plan. Do you have a voting plan? That is what I have been asking you. That is the challenge to you. Do you have a voting plan? Do your friends have a voting plan? Do your family members have a voting plan? Do your relatives have a voting plan? Does your grandparent or grandparents have a voting plan? And are you helping them with that? These questions that I have just asked you should all now on this August 15th 2020 have an answer if you do not have an answer to any of the questions that i have just asked you then i urge you to get an answer sometime this weekend have an answer for for yourselves not really for me for yourself have you alerted your family members about voting early I'm going to continue to ask that question on Twitter in a poll question. On Twitter, I am at the popcorn R E E L. And I'm going to ask questions like, have you told your friends and family to vote early? Have you told your relatives to vote early? Are your relatives and friends going to vote early? Have they said that they would do so? Have you told friends? Have you asked them about a plan? Have you told your friends about a plan to vote? You know, I'm going to be asking those questions on Twitter at the popcorn R-E-E-L on a daily basis now. I'm going to be doing that For the next few days. In addition to really dedicating a lot of the next few more weeks on the importance of voting early and on voter information. And what you're going to get from me, as I said earlier, are direct facts and information from the official Secretary of State's websites. And I'm also going to be telling you once again, as I have on a daily basis here, about going to your county board of elections. They have websites as well, and they can be readily found. Those are the places where you'll be getting official 
up-to-date information. I know people talk about vote.org, but I would at this point, everybody, please, as I said yesterday in the episode I did then, I would advise you to focus solely. In fact, I strongly recommend, I'm telling you, focus only on the Secretary of State website in your state or go to your board of elections website, your county board of elections website in your city, in your county. Those are the only two places that you should be going to. Because as I outlined yesterday, and as I outlined also on Twitter, there was an error on the vote.org website, a huge error regarding Rhode Island. And I want to remind people of of what that error was. It's also on my Twitter page, at the popcorn, R-E-E-L. And I put the two screenshots side by side, a screenshot of the vote.org website that said that Rhode Island does not have early in-person voting, which is not true. It does. And I put that screenshot with, I put the official website of the Rhode Island Secretary of State and I tagged her as well. I think her name is Nellie Burgos, something of that nature. But I put her name or her Twitter handle on that so that she's aware of what vote.org is doing. I also tagged vote.org on Twitter. This is misinformation and people are going on that site, vote.org, and relying on that stuff. And the screenshot of the Rhode Island website has on it early voting in person. (laughs) That's the official Rhode Island website. It says early in person voting. So do not trust vote.org. And I know MSNBC has been pushing it. I know Joy Reid has been pushing it. I need to tweet her. And maybe you can tweet her too at Joy Reid. I think it's Joanne Reid. J-O-Y-A-N-N-R-E-I-D, I guess. But you can find her pretty easily on Twitter. And please remind her and be nice. And just let her know that the, I, I will let her know actually that this is that she should, really has to be careful with vote.org. There's a lot of confusion. And what I aim to do is make this as clear as and as easy as possible. And here are really the three main directives that I have. One, vote early. Two, be proactive. And three, share the information with everybody you know. Pass the information on and educate people. Those are essentially distilled to their finest, most concise essence. Are the three things that you, me, and everyone you know, and I know, must do over these next few weeks. One, vote early. Two, be proactive. Three, share the information and educate people. These three things are going to be critical because you know what all of that does? It ensures a high voter turnout. Whether you're going to vote by mail, whether you're going to vote in person. And at this point, if I had a fourth directive, it would be to vote early in person. And I know that sends chills down the spines of some of those of you who are listening to me right now. COVID-19, we can't do that. My God, are you crazy? You're telling us, Omar, to go out there and vote early? Yeah, I am telling you that. 
I recognize that it will not be something that some people can do. So if you're someone who cannot do that, for whatever reasons those are that are personal to you. And there's no way that you are going to go out in a pandemic, regardless, then accept it. I accept that and we all accept that. And you have to accept what choice you're going to make. But if you are a a certain someone or any someone who decides that, no, I'm not going to vote early in person, then please make sure that you vote early by mail. Please do that. And even an alternative to that. Be proactive. Check the websites for when your ballot will be made available. Hopefully you've already applied for one. But I would do all of that in person. And I know, again, I know there's some people who won't do that. Have somebody escort you and bring you to the local county board of elections office in your neighborhood, in your city, in your county. Have somebody drive you there. This is what I mean by when I say, do you have a plan to vote? And I've been saying this now for months. Do you have a plan? And like I've always said, It is not about who you're going to vote for. That's not what I'm talking about when I say, do you have a plan? I am talking about, do you have a plan in terms of the logistics? And this is one of those logistics parts. Drive somebody to the precinct. This is what I mean by be proactive. Pick up your absentee ballot application now by mail, uh, by, by going into the precinct yourself. Go to the Secretary of State's office or go to the, preferably really, you should really first go to the, the County Board of Elections office in your area. That's what you should be doing. Go to your County Board of Elections office, drive there, get a bus there, have somebody drive you there, that you trust do that over these next do that these next few days really this month of august do not hesitate do it this month do it on monday have them drive you to that office contact that office in advance by phone you can get the phone numbers but this is the time for you now to be proactive to work around the slowdown of the post office which is why I was saying, look, it's one thing for Jeff Tubin and uh, Zelina Maxwell to and they just report. Zelina Maxwell, I'm not picking on her. She's reporting the news and she's reporting what the Washington Post has said. And that's all well and good. And I must say uh, to Zelina and to the rest of those folks on MSNBC, West, the rest of the folks on MSNBC, they've done a much better job even with the vote.org mentioning, and I really think that you should disregard vote.org and just focus on your official state's websites that run this stuff. The Board of Election sites in your counties and the Secretary of State site. Those are the only two areas you should be going to online. Seriously, nothing else, nothing else. I will say that MSNBC have done an excellent job of awakening the conscience of people and giving them tips on voting, getting people on the air, secretaries of state, etc., etc. I think that they've done well with that. And I hope to have a, a secretary of state or two or someone from their office on um, in the not too distant future so that you know we can have this conversation because it's very important now. The three things that I said being proactive, voting early, preferably voting early in person in particular, and sharing the information and educating others is going to be how we win this November. That is going to be the key. And I am going to give you the information straight, no chaser. You are going to be fully... By the time I get through with you, 
<laughs> you are going to be fully versed, chapter and verse, on voting in your state. <laughs> Don't forget to direct the questions to your state, however. I mean, I'll try to answer some of them, but you need to be contacting your state. Whether it's the Board of Elections in your county or whether it, you know, your office there online or on the phone or whether it is the Secretary of State themselves. But you need to be going to these places. And you need to really, as I said, you need to go in person. You need to, if you have not applied for a ballot yet, I would be right now going to my local county board of elections office. You can go online and find out which county you're in and find out where your county board of elections office is. Get their address, get their phone number. And heck, I'd drive there. I'd go there. I don't know if they're open over the weekend, but I would go there Monday, first thing. I would not hesitate. Go in person, ask for an application for an absentee ballot if they require one. Ask for a ballot. Ask for, okay, I'm not registered. Tell them, I'm not registered yet. Can I register to vote here? A lot of these places do online registration voting. In fact, one of them is Tennessee, which I will get to in a few minutes. This is how we win, folks. We the people. All is not lost. Yes, we are despairing over the post office. Yes, we see the democratic process of voting being completely eviscerated in front of our eyes. There is no nice way to say that, right? You heard Don Lemon earlier on that bit of audio sighing, exasperated. But all is not lost. You may be feeling overwhelmed. You may be feeling despaired. You may be depressed. You may really feel that, oh my goodness, we're going to lose. We're not going to lose. We are going to win. And we win because this is in our hands. And that orange thing in the White House knows that. If he didn't know that he has already lost, if he didn't know that we have already won, then why would he be getting Louis DeJoy, his crony, who has no experience in postmaster generalship, to go and take all of these blue mailboxes off the streets? If we haven't already won, why would Donald Trump be getting Louis DeJoy to take out all of these sorting machines in post offices across the country? Machines that sort the mail, something along the rate of 36 million or is it 36,000 per hour? Maybe it's more than 36,000 an hour. Why, why would he be doing all that? We are going to win. But as with everything else, we cannot take anything for granted. As I've said before, vote.org is a website I would ignore. I would only focus on the only two websites you should be focusing on right now is the Secretary of State's website in your state and your local county board of elections website. Those are the only two sites. Why? Because they are both official. They are updated with the very latest information. They have phone numbers you can call. They have physical addresses you can go to. Those are the only two places you should be going for voting information. Nothing else. Nothing else. I don't care how official it looks. I don't care what it says. You have got to go to only two places. Your county board of elections 
website or your Secretary of State website in your state. That's it. We've already won. But in addition to ignoring vote.org I would and all these other kinds of sites, which I'm going to stop quoting now, I would also ignore these polls that show Joe Biden up by 20 or 10 or 4 or he's down by 2 or 1. I don't care about these polls, as I've said to you before. You must ignore them. Ignore these polls. Take your mind off the polls and focus on what you and your friends and your family are going to do. That is the mission. John Lewis said, get out there and vote. And I am saying, get out there and vote early. And I'm saying, get out there and vote early in person. Take that chance. Wear a mask, wear gloves, physically distance, and do this early. Because if you vote early, I'm telling you, this guy will go down to defeat. You will have no more trauma from an orange thing. The orange thing will be defeated. And the only thing standing in the way of further fascism and tyranny in this country is you. Put an end to it this November. That the American public should be prepared that this will not be likely an election night. This will likely be an election week, if not an election month. It is going to take a while to get these ballots back and then, of course, get counted on. And for those of us who were here... For hanging chads, uh, we are not looking forward uh, to that. Thank you, Jessica. I really appreciate that. Hey, listen, when they say it's rigged, maybe they know something we don't. Yeah, well, <laughs> maybe we, <laughs> maybe they do know something we don't, Don. I don't know. That was Don Lemon last night with uh, Jessica Schneider. She is the. Uh, um, nationwide le- legal analyst, I believe, just the justice correspondent for CNN. Last night on Don Lemon's show, CNN Tonight. Now, look, I, I get it. Yeah, maybe they do know something we don't. Maybe they already know. We know that Russia's involved. We know that China's involved. We know that the Republicans are involved. We know that Kanye West and Jared Kushner are involved. We have seen that, right? We know. We know about these meetings that... Kushner had and with Kanye West. I mean, they are trying everything to steal this thing right in front of you, right in front of you. And yet we have the upper hand. And Jessica Schneider is correct. Yes, this election is not going to be decided on November 3rd. What she didn't say is this election is going to be decided in August and in September and in early October. Now, why do I say that? Because I'm talking to the people who are going to decide it. That is you. Because if you vote early, you are going to be able to get rid of this orange menace. End of story. If you're somebody who has had enough, if you're someone who is sick to the teeth of Donald Trump and these Republicans, then you need to vote them out as early as possible. And you need to vote them out in person in early voting. Early voting works. You can drop off your Ballot. Got to be completed. Don't forget to sign the darn thing, right? Drop it off at your local county board of elections. Drop out that completed ballot and signed ballot at your local county board of elections.
And make sure if you're if you sign this ballot, make sure it matches the signature. This is why it's important to be careful. Because the signature that you have that they have on file has to be matched. Some of these states require that. Some of these states require, in fact, many of these states may require the signature match. And I would absolutely be asking about that as well. If you're going to hand these things in in person, or even if you're not, if you're going to vote vote by mail. The system is designed to trip you up and confuse you. So there are people like Greg Palast. There are people like Ari Berman. There are people like Color of Change, Richard Robinson. There are people like the folks at Election Protection. All of those folks... And also people like Mark Elias, or Elias, I guess is the way you pronounce his last name, who are really trying to fight back against all of this stuff that is confusing. And I'm also, I'd like to think that I am also trying to do the same. And by the way, any of us who has a platform must and should be doing this. I get it. Maybe there are people who don't have time to do that early in the mornings. I get it. Or whenever. They don't have time to do that. I understand that. But if you have a platform, I don't care how big or small the platform that you have is, you too should be making a video or making an audio clip or hosting a podcast where you give out information like the information I am giving out. And if you can't do those things, then I really do recommend that you pass on this information that I am providing to you. Do not sit on this information yourself. Pass it to your friends. Pass it to family members. And more importantly than that, in addition to that, Make sure you act on it. Make sure you're proactive. Do not wait. Ask your Secretary of State or your County Board of Elections office about ballots. Call them on the phone. Find out when those ballots will be ready. Find out when the information on the ballot will be ready. What kind of things will I be voting on? What will I be, you know, be proactive. Ask for absentee ballot. Don't wait for them to be mailed to you. Believe me, you need to call these Secretary of States or more precisely, you need to call your local county board of elections office in your city, in your county. That's what you need to do as well. And I think I would say that is the priority. Why? Because it's local to you, right? You can drive there. I, I guarantee you're probably closer to your board of elections office than you are to the Secretary of State's office, but maybe not. But I would try both of them. I don't look, both of them. I would call them. I would drive to them. I would have someone drive you there and get that ballot. Ask for it in person. And if and when you have a ballot, if you filled it out, drop it off in person. This is how you go around the corruption and criminality of what Trump and DeJoy are doing. Go in person to do this. Have someone take you there. Have someone do it for you. Someone you trust. But I would go there in person with them. If you can. If you can. In the pandemic. I would make sure that you have a mask on. I'd put gloves on. And I know it's hot. It was 93 here yesterday in San Francisco. And I'm sure it was a lot hotter down in Palm Springs, California. And in the Midwest. And in Chicago. Part of the Midwest. I know these other parts of the Midwest. And in Florida, I get it, I get it, I get it, it's hot. But you've got to put on a mask, please. It's for your own good and it's for the good of people around you. And especially when you're voting early or going into these offices, they're going to ask you to put on a mask. Really, more than likely. And even if they don't ask you, you should have one on. So that's what I want to get across to you. That's really what I want to get across to you. And yes, Jessica Schneider is correct. November 3rd, we are not going to find out the result of this election. 
we're probably, and I said this on Twitter about a month ago, we're probably going to have a scenario where it will take about a week. And she said about a, a week or maybe if not an election month, we could be going to the you know, Bush Gore territory, which is on my tweet I said about a month ago, this is going to take probably another week before we find out. So by the time we get to November 10th, November 11th, we are going to then find out who the winner is. And then what you're going to get is Donald Trump trying to challenge that legally, a la Bush v. Gore. That's what you're going to probably get. That's what I think you're going to have happen here. And then we'll see. And I think it will get to the Supreme Court. And I think the Supreme Court will not rule in the favor of Donald Trump, even though there's at least two Supreme Court justices on there that are Trump justices. The Supreme Court cannot afford another Bush v. Gore decision. It would already further taint their already tainted credibility because we know that that has gone out the window since the 1800s with a decision called Dred Scott versus Sanford. And if you don't know what Dred Scott versus Sanford is about, I would ask you at this point to go and search that online. D-R-E-D, that's the first name, Scott, the common spelling, versus Sanford. S as in Sam, A, N as in Nancy, F as in Frank, O, R, D as in dog. Go and look that up and you'll be able to read and find out what that Supreme Court decision was about and what it said. But Jessica Snyder is correct about this not being decided on November 3rd because of all of this garbage from Louis DeJoy, this illegal Garbage. This stuff that is a federal crime. He could be put in prison for five years for doing what he's doing. And I get it. The inspector general's looking into it and all that. Fine. But he needs to be impeached. The Democrats aren't going to do that right now. And they're not going to do it because they know that the Senate is not going to convict Louis DeJoy and remove him. They, they know that. They know Louis DeJoy is not going to be. The Democrats know that. The Senate's, the Republican senators aren't going to agree. They've already acquitted Donald Trump this year, remember? In February, in that sham trial that Mitch McConnell had, no witnesses called. So these guys are criminal as well. So you're going to ask a criminal Republican Senate, a criminal Republican controlled Senate to somehow vote to convict a criminal named Louis DeJoy? I don't think so. So the Democrats are, as much as I would love the Democrats to impeach Louis DeJoy and quite frankly, impeach Donald Trump again, the same result is going to happen. Therefore, a waste of taxpayer money. Therefore, in the middle of an election campaign, which look, I mean, it could help them, but really it's a waste of time, sadly. And I've come to that conclusion now. Although nothing is a waste of time when it means trying to preserve the democratic process. What little of that is left anyway to begin with. Because this country was not founded on democratic processes. What this country suffered was white men coming, taking over the country by violent force, genociding Native Americans, stealing their land, and then kidnapping and enslaving black people from the African continent and then forcing them under penalty of death and in many cases killing them and lynching them and raping them for 300 years to build the land, build the country. And they were never compensated. None of those black people was ever compensated. 300 years of free labor. That's what this country was founded on. The U.S. of A. That's what it was founded upon. Democracy? We scarcely have anything of the sort here. And now you've got the system working to prime condition. Because even as the founding fathers wrote this constitution, 
they enslaved black people. As did the first, what, 14 or 15 of 16 presidents of this United States. So remember where the history is here. But also remember that we must reckon with it. And I mean not reckon with it because I hate that word, reckoning. What are we, what are we reckoning with? Nothing. No one, is, no one is offering reparations. Where's the reparations? We must confront this history. And we must now also deal with this election. And empower yourself. Vote early and make sure you vote early in person. Or at least drop off your completed ballot in person. Voter education. That's what I'm going to be doing a bit more of with two states. South Dakota and Tennessee. Next. Welcome back. South Dakota. And for South Dakota voters, you need to go here right now. If you have internet access, and I I hope you do, um, you know, I really, that's the thing too. You know, there are a lot of people who do not have internet access. And internet access is just critical. It's critical to, to all of this. You know, and if you have internet access and you know someone who doesn't, I would really, really hope that you convey to them or help them with this particular thing. This goes for anybody in any state, by the way. So this is where you need to go. You need to type in S is in Sam, D is in dog, S is in Sam. O S is in Sam dot gov forward slash elections dash voting. I'll repeat that. S is in Sam, D is in dog, S is in Sam, O is in orange, S is in Sam dot G O V forward slash elections dash voting. That particular address will get you to the South Dakota Secretary Steve Barnett. He's got this smiling face. He's smiling at you there at the top of the page. Underneath that, you will see a series of headings. One of them will say elections and voting. And you will also see some headings underneath that. There's lots of headings there. It's just so much information and categories. So many. You've got register to vote, update voter registration, Everything. Voter information portal. And you will see in red, voter information portal. Now, there's two places on that site where you see that on that page that I'm referring to. There is a place that says voter information portal right near the top in a really thick red rectangular band with a number of other categories. You can click on that one if you want. The one I would like to go to, however, and it may lead you to the same place, but the one I want to go to is the one on the far right hand side of the page underneath elections and voting where it says voter information portal VIP. And it tells you all of these things. Where do you vote? All that kind of thing. I'd click on that. And that is a way to check to see if you are registered to vote. So that voter information portal at the bottom, it will say voter registration name search. What this does in South Dakota, it says, please type your name exactly as it reads on your voter registration form with either your date of birth or your residential address zip code. Do not fill in both. So. When you get to this point and you want to check to see that your name is still, that you're still registered to vote, you have to fill this in, first name and last name, as it reads on your form, if you can, you know, just fill your name in, 
date of birth and zip code or zip code, either one, not both. You just follow the prompts. And it's pretty straightforward for those of you who are wanting to just check to see if you're still registered to vote in South Dakota. What you will also note on that voter registration name search as you scroll to the bottom is in red text, it will say the general election ballot is not available for viewing until mid-September 2020. So keep that in mind. It also says absentee ballots will be mailed out beginning September the 18th. You know what? If I were you and I was a voter in South Dakota, I would not be waiting until September 18th for those ballots to begin being mailed out. Uh, 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 uh. I would be driving to my local county board of elections office in South Dakota and in person I will be asking them for either an absentee ballot if you've not applied for one online or or called for one or I would be asking can I get a mail can I have it mailed to me earlier than the 18th if they can't Mail it earlier. Keep checking with them every day. Keep calling them every day. Do not just sit there and take no for the answer when it comes to this situation with voting. I want you to be proactive. That's one of the things I said. Be proactive. Vote early, preferably vote early in person. I think that's very important. And share the information and educate people. Those are the three things I want you to do. It's Saturday, August the 15th. So when you see this absentee ballots will be mailed out beginning September 18th in South Dakota and you're a resident of South Dakota, do not wait for a full month and three days before knowing that South Dakota will begin to mail things out to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? in a post office that has already delayed things. Look, I got some mail just yesterday, international mail, that normally takes less than a week to get to me. It took twice as long, more than twice as long to get to me now. So this mail thing is real, which was why I'm saying to you, you can work around it, by dropping off your ballot at a drop box. If there are drop boxes in your state, there are drop boxes in a number of states. I suggest that you go and do some research by quite frankly, again, contacting the Board of County Elections Office, either online or by phone or in person, or the Secretary of State in your state. That website, contact that person, go to their website, Ask about drop boxes. Do you have drop boxes where I can drop these things off? But I think the best way to drop something off is to drop it off at your local county board of elections. Drop off your completed ballot and your signed ballot, completed and signed. Drop it off at your local board of elections. Believe me, your county board of elections, drop it off because that's the place where you're voting, right? Your county is where you're going to be voting, right? That's where you're going to that's where you can drop it off. If not, you can drop it off at your voting precinct. And obviously now in pretty much every state as I do this on August 15th, you're not going to be able to actually physically do that yet. Which is why I would urge you in the spirit of being proactive, I would urge you to go in person to your county board of elections and ask them Hey, I would like to drop this off. Can I do that here? And you can, you can. But again, you need to be proactive. You need to make phone calls to your local county board of elections. And ask them about deadlines. Ask them about, I mean, it's all on the websites. And I'm going to, and I've been reading, uh, telling you what the deadlines are for the last few weeks. I will have this whole, all 50 states where you can all see, you can see where every deadline is 
And this information is going to come solely from the Secretary of State's websites or the County Board of Elections site. This is this is where this info, and I'll make that clear so that you do not have to be going anywhere else for this information. South Dakota's website is, I think, very good. There is, if you want to register to vote, when you, again, you go back to sdsos.gov forward slash elections dash voting. And I will put these links, I will put all of these links into the liner notes for this episode. You can find that on Apple. You can find that anywhere you get your podcasts. And you can click on these or you can copy and paste them into a browser. And it will take you straight to these websites. I think it's best to look at all these websites on a laptop, on a desktop, because that you'll get the full picture of things. But again... If you need to be able to, you need to be looking at this information either at your local county board of elections website or on the Secretary of State's website for your state. There's so many things. If you go back to that page and then you see elections and voting, there's register to vote, update your voter registry. I mean, this is just great. There's all kinds of resources here. Uh, it's just terrific, actually. I am very impressed. And you scroll down. I'm impressed with South Dakota's website. I really am. There's a there's a lot of good things on it. It gives you information about voting, where to vote, update your the voting information. I mean, it's just fantastic voter information. Uh, if if you want to know about what to do and how to do it, South Dakota's got everything for you. It's got phone numbers for more information. Call. 605-773-3537 or you can email them and they've got an email address there. You click on it. You click on the e- email link rather. So this is very important info. This is very important. I mean, you learn so much. There are There's um, a number of really helpful tools and I'm telling you, you will be very thankful uh, to go to the website there in South Dakota. And there's more information there. Now for Tennessee. Tennessee, a good website here as well. I'm really happy about this. Tennessee has made it very easy for you. Tennessee, if you are listening, here's where you want to be. You go to SOS, that's Sam Oscar Sam, dot TN, that's Thomas Nancy, dot GOV, forward slash elections. That brings you to the smiling face of Trey Hoggett. He will be smiling at you. He's the Tennessee Secretary of State. So his smiling face is looking at you, and below his smiling face, you will see two things. View unofficial results for the August 6th election. And below that, register to vote online. It's in red. Boom. Click on register to vote online if that is what you want to do. So if you are a first-time voter in Tennessee and you've not registered to vote, make sure you click on register to vote online. It will take you to the Tennessee Online Voter Registration System. Then it goes, gives you the requirements, blah, blah, blah. And at the bottom, on the right-hand side, it will say next. So you start the voter registration process online by clicking next. Voila. You are taken through the prompts. It's just really easy. And on the left-hand side, where it says voter eligibility, you will see the other additional eight steps after that that you'll be filling out. Lickety split. This is really good. It's clear, it's concise, it's easy. Go vote Tennessee. So that is the online portion of registering to vote. Now, if you want to check your voter information, and as I recommend always, make sure that you check your 
registration every week through the end of October, every single week. In fact, I really would urge you to do that. And as if you're someone who plans to vote on election day, <gasps> yikes, I would urge you to check your voter registration right through November 3rd. But again, at this point, to be frank with everybody listening, you should not be wanting to vote on November 3rd. You should be voting as early as your state allows. And that's why I'm doing this. I'm going to be giving people in pretty much every state early voting dates. In some states, there are not early voting dates at all. About 38 to 40 of the 50 states. So 38 states, I'd say 40 states allow early voting. 40, 40 out of the 50. 40 of them offer early voting. So again, I'm going to have a large, I'm going to have a comprehensive electronic document. You know, I'm going to have that and I'm going to make sure that it, it is out there for people. And that's going to be coming within the next little while. And it's going to be official. It's going to be coming from official sources. And I, and, and th- because this is so important, this, the education portion of this is going to be the key. Because education means there is no confusion. If you are educating somebody with the facts, with the information, the official information, then nothing else matters. Because all I, everything I'm telling you is coming directly from the official secretary of state. That's official. Period. All these sites that I have been reading to you from are from the secretaries of state in every single state in this country. And right now I'm doing Tennessee's. Every single one. So you are only going to get official information from me. And if I've made a mistake here, please let me know. So far, I've corrected any mistake that I may have made. And really, I can count those. <laughs> I can count those on one hand to be, I just be blatantly honest with you. If I've made a mistake, let me know. But I'm telling you, this is coming and I'm giving you links. I'm giving you all the information. So I would, please, I urge you to spread this podcast episode and all of these podcast episodes so that you can get this information to people via Zoom. I tell you, spread this information. You've got so much social media on your phone. Pass on this information. I want you to text your friends and family every day. Beg them. Have you registered to vote yet? Beg them. Have you, do you have a plan yet? Beg them. Let's talk about this tonight. Beg them. Tell them. Have you told people you know to early vote? Beg them. Have you, do you have a plan to drive or have someone take you to your local county board of elections? Are you going to do that on Monday or Tuesday? Are you going to do that in the morning? Beg them. Tell them. Make them sick of you. Make them disown you. Tell them, I don't care how many texts. I'm not saying text them two in the morning now. I'll wake them up out of bed. But what I'm saying is you need to be proactive. This is what I mean when I say be proactive. It's not just about going to your local county board of elections office and asking for that ballot in person or dropping it off in person. It's also about spreading this information. This information, not me. I want you to spread these facts to your friends and family. It's about texting them and saying, have you registered to vote yet? Have you early voted yet? Have you um, committed to this plan of voting yet? Let's talk about it. Let's educate. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about having a Zoom meeting with your friends, having a Zoom meeting with young people you know. Ask them to be poll workers. 
That's what I'm talking about. Ask your son or daughter to be a poll worker. Incentivize them. Tell them the importance of being a poll worker. All of the folks who were in these, pro- and who are still marching in these protests of Black Lives Matter, get some of those folks to be poll workers. Make sure they all vote. Young people have to be the ones also to vote here. Let's encourage young people to vote. That's what I mean by being proactive. That's what I mean by us getting out there and we are going to be winning this. We are going to win this. If All we have to do is just do these things that I've been talking about. Drop off your ballot in person if you can. I really recommend that. I, I recommend dropping it off early in person. I recommend contacting your board of elections, dropping it off at your local county board of elections in person. Believe me, we can do this. We will do this. We just need to just follow what I'm saying to you, please. Go on Twitter, right? Go on Twitter. Ask the question, have you registered to vote yet? Have you checked your voter registration yet? Have you been checking it? Check it every week. Every week through the end of October, check it. Are you voting early? This is what you have to do. And Tennessee, one of the best websites out here. If you go again to sos.tn.gov forward slash elections. Hey, voila, you scroll down and you can also check your voter registration. It says voter registration lookup and absentee by mail ballot status tracker. So you can track your ballot here too. You click on the voter registration lookup and boom, voila, you're there. All you have to do is put your information in and check to see if you're still registered. It's easy. Tennessee's website Again, one of the very best. We've had some good ones. These last two episodes, today and yesterday. Fantastic. These sites are working like a dream. And you know what else is good about Tennessee? With their voter website? They have an app. They have a voter app. And every state should have this. I think a lot of states do have this. And I'm going to include this information also on this check sheet that I'm going to be compiling. Tennessee has a voter app. I've even looked at it. It's damn good. You go on to, and it's Android or Apple. It is the Go Vote TN voter app. So you go to your app store or to Android and just type in Go Vote TN. That's Go Vote TN. T is in Tom, N is in Nancy. And you can do all of these things on that app. It's just so good. All the information's there. Android, iPhone. You can click on this. I mean, this is, Tennessee's website's one of the very best. I have to tell you. You you, you go to sos.tn.gov forward slash elections. You scroll down on that page to near the bottom or well halfway down in the middle it will say go vote TN app click on that and then you go to a page and it's got iPhone app Android app webs- website app Tennessee and it, it just lays everything out download that if you're a Tennessee voter download that app now do it. <laughs> you have to do this. And California has a voter app. And I think a lot of these states, I think every one of these states should have one. And I'm going to, again, include the ones that do. And I'll put links on all of that as well. I mean, this is just incredible. And by the way, if you want to, I mean, this is this is really 
And Tennessee's website, I, I cannot speak highly enough. You can click on, uh, find out where your county uh, board of commissions is, same as board of elections. Click on that and you can find out where that is. I mean, this is great. So if you want to ask questions in person or call them, you can. You can email them. You can drive down to that office and ask them and drop off the ballot there or ask them about it or you can ask them about all that. Find out when the ballots are allowed. I mean, the, 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 when you can hand them off. This is just so good. I mean, I, I have to say, Tennessee's is terrific. It's terrific. You can become a poll official. I mean, this, this, all of these things can happen, right? I mean, this is... This is just terrific. This is just terrific. Tennessee's website is superb. It's one of the very best of the ones that I have come across here. Now, um, there is early voting in Tennessee. And it goes from October the... Let me, let me actually get the exact dates because exact dates are important as uh as you know <laughs> the, the, you know the, these are uh, critical things here we we need to have exact dates we need to have that so i i, I really do urge you to do this and um, you can also go to GoVoteTN.com forward slash voting. And you will also see register to vote online, frequently asked questions, check your voter registration status, contact your county election commission. Everyone, every state has a different name for board of elections office. In Tennessee, it's called the County Election Commission. Same thing, though. And you can contact them. I mean, this is such a good website. You know, this is a deep south state. Tennessee is in the deep south, right? Part of the south. And we can say everything we want to say about the south and about Republicans all over the country trying to hinder your vote. But let me tell you, this website in Tennessee, it couldn't be easier what they're doing. I mean, this is, uh, I, I, I am very impressed. They even have an election day hotline. Although I wouldn't be calling it on election day. I'd be calling it now. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> I would be calling it now. 877-850-4959. That is the Division of Elections official election day hotline. Now I would be calling that, and that's if you have a, that's if you have questions or find out that is if you see any funny business going on. That that's what that phone number is for. If you have questions about voter ID, call the Division of Elections at eight seven seven eight five zero four nine five nine. That's the same number. I mean, so like I say, I wouldn't wait. Uh, I mean, this is this is just. I am. That's why I'm. I'm kind of staggered <laughs> for Tennessee. Uh, not that I underestimate Tennessee, but I think Tennessee's website is one of the most comprehensive and, by the way, quite easy websites to use, and. This is just, again, you wouldn't have, I'll be honest with you, I would not have expected that. So maybe my expectations are a bit lower. But this is a, this is a, a, a really good, um, comprehensive website, right? This is something that, I think you should really, really be looking at if you're a Tennessee voter 
Here are the dates for November 3rd's general election for Tennessee. The first day to request an absentee ballot for the November 3rd general election, if you're in Tennessee, is August the 5th. That was 10 days ago. So if you are a Tennessee voter right now, I, and I know someone in Tennessee, so I'm going to get in touch with that person. <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to do that. If you are going to vote absentee, you need to <laughs> you need to be getting to your county board of elections down there, whatever they call it down there. I've already told you. You need to go down there now. <laughs> you need to get your behind down there on Monday morning or get someone to do and and get that absentee ballot. Request it in person. Trust me. They've been doing that for 10 plus days now in Tennessee. You need to get yourself down there to your local board of elections or whatever they county office or whatever they said it was. And you can find it on their website, the sos.tn.gov. You need to go down there now. Now, 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 now. Do not wait. Now, now, now. <laughs> and you need to request that ballot in person. FYI. You can call them as well, but I would do it in person if you can. I really would urge that. Or you can call them. It's up to you. But do it now. <laughs> I don't care whether you do it in person or whether you do it over the phone when you request this ballot, but I would rather do it in person. But all I care about really is that you do it now and do not sit around and procrastinate. Procrastination is the enemy of us all. We need to be proactive, as I said. We need to vote early, preferably in person. I urge you to do that in person. And we need to... Spread the information to everybody we know and educate people and pass the information on. Those are the three things. The voter registration deadline in Tennessee is October the 5th. Do not wait until then. Register to vote online now. <laughs> okay? It's August the 15th, 2020. Tennessee. Tennessee voters. Tennesseans, please. Register the vote now, now, now in August. Do not wait. Early voting. This is what I want to get to. Early voting in Tennessee. Wednesday, October the 14th through Thursday, October the 29th. So if you want to vote early, meaning voting early in person or... Hey. Make sure you do it on October the 14th. That's the first day you can do it. And if you are, you know, doing the vote by mail early, I would drop it off at your local board of elections or your voting precinct. So whatever that might be, and you can find out what your voting precinct is when you go to your local board of elections, they'll tell you, give them your address, your ID, blah, blah, blah. I, I, look, they'll tell you, you, you know, they'll tell you, you can drop it off there too in person. It's not, you know, it's got to be filled out and signed and all that. But once you do that, you drop it off in person, please. This is how we, this is how we win this election this November. Voting in person early and dropping off the mail in person or dropping off the ballot in person to your local county board of elections. Absentee ballot request deadline, October 27th. Don't wait until then. Go to the offices now in Tennessee. That's it. That's it. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for your indulgence. Thank you for listening to this edition of The Politocrat. I'm Omar Moore.